for our first speaker, we have Piet Pietro Ferrero from Oxford, who will talk about gluon scattering in ADS from CFT. Take it away, Pietro. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for allowing me to speak in this very interesting series of seminars. And today we'll speak about this work uh, that I have done earlier this year in collaboration with Fernando Dai, Conor Behan, and Chinanzu. Let me start with a brief overview and some motivation uh, for what I will discuss. The basic setup is ADS-CFT, which is very well known to relate string theory or M theory on ads plus one times uh, some compact manifold M backgrounds to conformal field theories living on the uh, conformal boundary of ADS. The main observable that we'll consider in this setup is uh, holographic four-point functions. So correlators between uh, boundary excitations in ADS that are dual to uh, actual correlators in the CFT. And we consider the case in which we have a small parameter, which I'm calling generically G here, and we're doing an expansion in this small parameter. This G um, is all in general when we have a weakly coupled supergravity description in the bulk. For instance, if you take the case of ADS5 process 5, which is dual to n plus 4 supreme meals, this G uh, would be 1 over n squared, where n is the number of the etheric rays. So here I wrote schematically some terms in these expansions. In particular, the first is just uh, a disconnected contribution, which is completely trivial. So we will not care much about this. Well, the second term represents schematically three level interactions, and it is uh, the subject of this talk. Uh, the next order would be uh, one loop contributions, which is the state of the art for this kind of analytic computations, and only a few cases here are known. And for all the rest, we really don't know much. So already three level, this is a non trivial problem. Uh, which was, in some cases, it was not fully solved until uh, very recently. Uh, as I said, it's a very hard problem. So what we'd like to do is consider uh, theories with super conformal symmetry. Uh, and moreover, we focused on the half PPS sector of operators in those theories. So we want as much super symmetry as we can. If you have these requirements, uh, then you immediately uh, are led to consider theories with maximal super symmetry. And we have these three theories that uh, correspond to maximally symmetric backgrounds of string theory or M theory. They are very well known. Um, and in particular, we focus on the half TPS operators, uh, which are in the symmetric traces representations of some uh, SO and plus one groups. And in particular, they are labeled by uh, some integer K, which is the rank of these representations. And for K equals two, um, the half PPS multiplet is the stress tensor multiplet in the CFT. And this is dual in the S uh, to uh, the supergraviton multiplet. While for K higher than two, uh, these operators in the CFT correspond to Kaluza Klein modes of the graviton on the sphere. Here we always have a sphere as internal manifold, and the KK modes on the sphere are these half PPS operators. After 20 years of effort, um, since the very start of uh, ADS CFT, now, all uh, four point functions between arbitrary Kaluza Klein levels are known at three level, uh, thanks to a new idea that was introduced uh, last year by Fernando and Shinan, which is known as the MRV limit. And I will discuss what this actually is uh, later in the talk. So, this case was solved. And then, uh, what you should do is move to uh, theories with half maximal supersymmetry. And this is exactly the subject of this talk. And uh, what we will do is apply this idea of the MRV limit, which is a special configuration of our symmetry polarizations that really simplifies the correlators. We apply this to a large class of SCFTs with half maximal supersymmetry in dimension from three to six. And what we obtain is all the correlators, all the four-point functions between um, any half PPS operators at three level. And this is dual uh, not to graviton scattering, as in the maximally supersymmetric case, but rather to gluon scattering amplitudes in ADS. Let me also give some motivation for like why this is interesting. First of all, uh, we can use uh, these holographic correlators to learn about conformal field theory from gravity. In particular, we often deal with uh, CFTs that don't admit Telegrangian description. And if they, even if they do, it's really hard usually to compute non-protected CFT data at strong coupling. Um, and this uh, dual gravitational description allows us to perform this kind of computations. Similarly, we can learn about gravity from conformal field theory. In particular, uh, 
the CFT techniques allow to compute um, quantum gravity loops and higher derivative corrections to effective actions or in more in general effects of quantum gravity, which again, otherwise it would be very hard to compute. And finally, um, uh, more and more results are appearing on the archive about um, these holographic correlators, which are the natural analog of uh, flat space scattering amplitudes. So we can th think of them as ADS amplitudes. And we know very well that uh, for the flat space S matrix, uh, there are a lot of beautiful hidden structures that people have discovered uh, over the past years. Um, and a very interesting program is to extend um, the systematic study of amplitudes from flat space to ADS. Let me then give a brief history of these holographic correlators, um, starting with what the traditional method to compute this stuff is. In principle, uh, you have a supergravity Lagrangian, take type 2b for instance, you put it on ADS5 versus 5, you reduce, you Calusa Klein reduce on the phi sphere, and you get some interactions between the Calusa Klein nodes. Since we're interested in four point functions, we can truncate this to the quartic interactions. Then you extract the Feynman rules from the Lagrangian, as you would do in flat space. And um, to the Feynman rules, you associate some Witten diagrams, and then you sum, you sum all of them together and you obtain the result. This seems very straightforward, but in practice, um, we have two problems. The first one is that if you actually perform the Calusa Klein reduction, uh, keep all of the quartic interactions, even in the simplest case of ADS5 versus 5, you end up with these 15 pages of Lagrangian where each term looks like this. So people have done this, but uh, you don't really want to work with this. And the second problem is that even for the simple five to the four contact interactions, uh, the result in space time for the Witten diagrams uh, looks like this. This is just one diagram, and then you should add, add many of these together. And so, as you might expect, the result is not nice. So um, it's really hard to make pro progress this way. Uh, nonetheless, people have obtained some results in the past, in particular, a bunch of results for ADS5 crosses 5, the simplest four point function in ADS7 crosses 4 and no results at all for ADS4 crosses 7. Therefore, we need some new tools to make progress and get actual computations to work in uh, complicated theories like uh, ADS4 crosses 7, which is ABJM. And uh, in particular, uh, let me introduce two tools. The first one is Melian space. For simplicity, let's focus on the case of four identical operators in the CFT. So we have this uh, simple prefactor. And uh, the correlator depends on one function of two variables, u and v, which are the usual cross ratio. What you can do is the analog of a Fourier transform for flat space amplitude, which is known as the Mellin transform. This is the formula. Uh, and let me highlight the, the main features. Here, here we have u, u and v, the cross ratios. And here we have s and t, which are uh, the Mellin variables that are dual to u and v. Then we have a perfactor with some gamma functions. Uh, which take into account some poles, in particular, uh, the poles of the double trace operators that are present in every holographic CFT. And we have uh, this variable u, which is constrained uh, in this way in terms of SMT. And these are the analog of flat space Mandelstam variables. And finally, we have the Mellin amplitude M of SMT. And this object is much simpler in the cases that we will consider than the full correlator in terms of the space time cross ratios u and v. In particular, you see that the integration here uh, is over an imaginary axis. So what we will do is close this, um, we close the integration contour and we sum uh, over all the residues that are enclosed by this contour. So what we really care about when you think about Menlin amplitudes is the uh, analytic structure of M. And in particular, since we focus on three level, we have essentially two cases to consider. The first is uh, that of contact terms take phi to the fourth uh, interactions in ADS. These Mellin amplitudes are polynomials in s &T of degree equal to the number of derivatives in the interaction divided by two. And this is exactly what we have in flat space. Moreover, if you take an exchange, uh, say in the S channel, then you have a simple pole uh, in S because this is the S channel exchange, which, which is exactly the same uh, as in flat space. But then you have to take a sum over all these simple poles where m equals 0 corresponds to the conformal primary that you're exchanging, while higher values of m correspond to the descendants. 
So it's a bit more complicated because you have in principle an infinite sum, but the idea is you have a single pole that um, corresponds to an exchange. The second idea was that of uh, introducing bootstrap methods in this kind of computations. So the idea is we forget about the Lagrangian and we use constraints coming from super conformal invariants, crossing symmetry and consistency in conditions. This way, uh, a lot of progress was made for the maximally supersymmetric cases. In particular, the full answer was obtained. Uh, full answer, I mean, all four point functions with all arbitrary KK modes, for ADS5 crosses five, and partial results for ADS7 crosses four and ADS4 crosses seven. However, despite the partial success, uh, still no organization principle is clear in, in these amplitudes, especially for them to theory backgrounds. So if we want to really unveil the hidden structures in these ADS amplitudes, we still need to do something more. And the something more is an idea uh, that was introduced, as I said, by Fernando and Shinan last year, uh, and it is the idea of the MRV limit, where MRV is for maximally R-symmetry violating. As I said, we consider correlators of these half BS operators that have uh, K indices symmetrized, and we can contract them. What we do usually is we contract them with polarizations. Um, these vectors T are polarizations of SON, and in the same way as we have the space-time cross ratios, we can create our symmetry cross ratios this way. And the correlation functions will be functions of sigma and tau. Now, this is the result for uh, the four point function of the stress tensor in the S7 crosses four. It is the Melina amplitude. Um, you can see that the result um, is not particularly nice. It is a function of S, T, U, and this uh, are symmetry cross ratios, sigma and tau. So this is not nice. However, if we focus on a special configuration of these are symmetry cross ratios, which is T1 equals T3, then we're setting this sigma to zero and this tau to one. And what happens is that the correlator, the Melina amplitude, simplifies dramatically. This is um, called U-channel, MRV limit in particular. And you see uh, that there is some clear structure. We have a sum of single poles in S and T with numbers as residues. And then we have some zeros in U. And this is what allowed uh, Fernando and Shinan to compute all the four-point functions in all maximally supersymmetric theories. And the reason why this is called MRV limit uh, is because there is something in flat space scattering, which is known as MHV amplitudes, uh, where uh, H is for helicity. So if you take uh, an n-gluon amplitude at three level and you take all positive helicity gluons, this will vanish. If you take one negative and the rest positive, this will vanish. And if you take two negative and, and the rest is positive, which is the simplest that doesn't vanish, this is called MHV, and you see that it is very simple. If you go away from these configurations, the amplitude uh, become a bit nastier. In the same way, in the MRV limit, the ADS amplitude is very simple. Away from the MRV limit, it will be something more complicated. Now I will move to the half maximal supersymmetric case, which is the subject of our paper. Uh, so if there is some questions about this first part, please let me know. Okay, so let's now decrease the number of supersymmetries. And here we have a whole zoo of theories uh, because we have less constraints, of course. And in particular, we have three theories ranging from six to three dimensions. And each of them has uh, like its own construction, uh, which may be more or less complicated according to what you know or you're familiar with. Uh, but what I, want, what I want to highlight here is some common features that allow us to actually compute these correlators. In particular, we usually have some uh, brains wrapping in ADSD plus one times S3. Take the simplest case, uh, which is the four dimensional one. You have ADS5 cross S5, which is the maximally supersymmetric background. You add some D7 brains that wrap ADS5 cross S3. And what happens is that you break the supersymmetry by a factor of one half. So you go from n equals four to n equals two. And since you're adding these D7 brains, they carry a vector multiplet with some gauge group GF, which is a flavor group from the point of view of the CFD. So if we look at the global symmetries in this series, we always have an SU2 times SU2, which comes from the isometries of S3. 
uh, or more in general, we have an R symmetry factor, an SU2L global symmetry factor, and then we have a GF, which is a gauge group from the point of view of the gauge supergravity, while it is a, a global symmetry group from the point of view of the CFT. And in these theories, not much was known before our paper, actually only the 2 to 2, two results were known uh, from this paper from Chinan. Uh, so this is the first thing that they have in common, the kind of holographic description and their global symmetries. And moreover, if we focus on the sector of uh, half PPS operators, we have this little table with their weights. You see the, their dimension can be described uh, here, sorry, I mean um, the super primaries of the half PPS multiplets. Their dimensions can be described uniformly in terms of this epsilon, which is the dimension minus two over two. The dimension is epsilon k. They are all scalars, spin zero. They have SU2R spin k over two, SU2L spin k minus two over two, and they are in the adjoint of this um, flavor group GF. For k equals two, uh, these correspond to conserved currents of GF. And since we know the currents are dual to gluons in supergravity, um, these are actually ADS gluons with the group GF. While for K higher than two, these operators in the supergravity correspond to the kaluza klein modes of the gluons on the S3. So the picture is similar to the maximally supersymmetric case, just instead of gravitons, we have gluons. Here is uh, a description of these operators explicitly in terms of some indices here. Uh, the first index I is an adjoint index of GF, the flavor group. Then we have K indices uh, for the SU2R, and we can saturate these or contract these with SU2R polarization vectors V. And then we have K minus two indices, uh, which are, uh, sorry, SU2L, not SU2R, which we can saturate with other K minus two polarization vectors V bar. So all in all, we end up with uh, an operator which has an adjoint index of GF and then depends on these polarizations. And what we compute um, is four point functions of this. We have full control on uh, the general case with unequal weights, but just for simplicity, I'll focus on identical weights. So K, 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 K. And the four point functions of these uh, operators are given by, as usual, some uh, conformal prefactor, and then a function of two space time cross ratios, U and V, defined here in terms of ZZ bar as well, and two. Um, SC2 cross ratios, alpha and beta. Alpha is the, for the R symmetry, and beta is for the SU2L global symmetry. So uh, we have these kinematics, and um, note that while the dependence on U and V can be actually quite complicated, the dependence on alpha and beta is polynomial. It's degree k in alpha and degree k minus 2 in beta. So it is quite simple. Moreover, uh, these functions G are not completely arbitrary, but rather they are constrained but by what is known as the super conformal world identity, which I wrote here. I replace the cross ratios U and V in terms of Z, Z bar, is not much. And then you have to satisfy this constraint, which is non-trivial and it's quite strong in fixing uh, our result as we will see. So this is essentially some kinematics for these theories. And let me move to the way that we use to actually compute the correlators. We start from Melin space, which as I showed you earlier, is a great simplification from, for these technical computations. And um, let me tell you a key fact, which is again common to all of the theories that I listed a few slides ago, which is in particular the fact that at lowest order in one over n, where n is the number of brains, we have that the gluon three-point functions which scale with one over CJ, where J is the current central charge, uh, are dominant over the three-point function between two gluons and one graviton, which scales like one over CT, uh, so which, where CT is the stress tensor central charge. So what happens is that essentially we can forget about the interactions with gravity, and we are considering pure gluon scattering in a fixed ADS background without dynamical gravity, at least at the lowest order in one over N. So we can write the, the amplitude in this way. We are introduced three color factors, CT, CS, CT, and CU, which are defined here in terms of the structural constants of the flavor group GF. And this is the same structure that you have for flat space scattering of gluons. 
um, what we need to do is make an ansatz for these MS and T and MU, which are just crossed of each other. So uh, we focus on MS. And for this, uh, our ansatz is a sum over certain exchanges plus some contact terms. Again, this should be reminiscent of this flat space structure. And um, if you think of the OP between, uh, in the CFT between the half PPS operators, the exchange part corresponds to the half PPS operators present in the OP, while the contact terms part correspond to the double trace ones. Pietro, so, you've got yeah. five more minutes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so the structure is quite simple, again, very similar to the flat space one, uh, but we have to be a bit careful because we're dealing with theories with supersymmetry, so we cannot just ex exchange uh, the super primary, rather we have to ex exchange the full super multiplet. So this is the actual content of operators that can be exchanged in the gluon super multiplet. You see they have uh, varying weights and uh, we have two scalars and one uh, spin one particle, which is the gluon. So our answers for the ex ex channel exchange should include not only the contribution of the super primary, which is the first term, but also the two super descendants that are allowed by symmetry to be exchanged. So this will be our answers for the exchange of one super gluon multiplet, where these, where these y's are, are symmetry polynomials. We have full controls on them. And similarly, this uh, M of delta and L correspond are uh, Melin um, exchange diagrams for the exchange of an operator with dimension delta and spin L. And again, we have full control on them. So what is missing is control on these relative coefficients, lambda A and lambda R. And what we want to do is fix them. The way we fix them uh, is considered the MRV limit. So we take V1 equals V3. So we align two of the R-symmetry polarizations. This sets alpha to zero. And we have two features of the amplitude in this limit. The first one is that there are no poles in U because uh, we cannot exchange half PPS operators in the U channel for symmetry reasons in this configuration. And moreover, there is a single zero in U equals two epsilon K, which is related to some long operators not being exchanged. If you require the single zero to be present from your ansatz, what you obtain is that the lambdas are completely fixed. So now we fix um, the, the single exchange. Uh, we know what this SP is, the exchange amplitude, the uh, S-channel amplitude will be a sum over these exchanges with OPA coefficients and some contact terms. And the last step of the procedure is to apply the super conformal word identities. And these are enough to fix all of the OPA coefficients, which are new in most of these theories. And moreover, it fixes the contact terms to zero. And the result is all the correlators between arbitrary KK modes in dimension three, four, five, six, and seven for this series, we have maximum supersymmetry. This is an example. Uh, it is the result for 222kk in four dimensions, where the CJ, one over CJ scales like one over n, one over CT is one over n squared. So I wasn't lying to you. Gluons are actually dominant. And this, the result, as you can see, is quite simple. Let me conclude. I will not have time to discuss it, but there are some very interesting hidden structures in these correlators. I will just skim through them very quickly, and then I will move to the conclusion. The first is color kinematics duality, which is present in flat space scattering of gluons, and we also have it here in ADS. The second is Parisi Sarla supersymmetry, which was discovered uh, many years ago and was found recently um, both in ordinary exchanges in ES and in maximally supersymmetric theories uh, in our paper. And here we also found it in half maximally supersymmetric ones. And finally, hidden conformal symmetry, which was found first for ADS5 cross 5 and then also for ADS3. And more in general, we uh, have arguments to say that this um, hidden conformal symmetry should be present whenever the uh, supergravity background is conformally flat. Sorry if the last part was very quick. It was just for those of you who know these words, just to say that these structures are present. And to conclude, let me give some uh, brief outlook. Um, First of all, we have this color kinematics duality, uh, which is present in the 2222 case. It is also present in flat space, and it relates to the double copy, which is a way to create gravity from gluons. Um, and this was generalized by Shinan to arbitrary KK modes in four dimensions, but we'd really like to do it in other dimensions and in non-supersymmetric theories as well. 
uh, then uh, we would like to be able to compute higher, high, higher point functions, not just four point functions, because uh, for instance, the color kinematics duality is a feature of uh, any number of points in flat space amplitudes. So we'd like to see if that is present in ADS as well, and also if higher point functions double copy to gravity and what the properties of color ordered amplitudes in ADS are. We would also like to include subleading corrections. So we only looked at blue scattering, but you, uh, at three level, but you can look at loops. You can include graviton exchanges, so have dynamical gravity in the bulk. You can include higher derivative corrections and mix correlators between gravitons and gluons. And all of this stuff is very in interesting and it is worth of future attention. Finally, um, we haven't done that, but it's in principle straightforward to extract CFT data from our correlators. And I would say that 99.9% .9 of the CFT data is unknown. Uh, so it's, it would be interesting to extract them, explore the structures, and fit them to the numerical bootstrap and compare with the results. Uh, finally, let me thank you for the attention. All right, uh, let's thank Pietro for the very nice talk. Uh, if there is any question, please raise your hand or just pick up. Okay, if there is no, uh, can I ask you a, a very simple yeah. naive question? Like, what do you think will be the most difficult challenges, uh, a challenge if you want to compute the, you know, like this kind of an amplitude with N1 super symmetry, like four supercharges. Yeah, so I think the main point is that uh, a crucial fact for our result was the fact that we applied at some point the super conformal word identities. Uh, and these require, these are a consequence of the fact that you look at these half DPS operators, you have uh, harmonic superspace, which is only uh, present if you have an unabelian or symmetry group. So I see, I see. If you have super, uh, four supercharges, you have U1, so you won't have the super conformal world identities and you have less constraints to impose. I'm not saying it's impossible, but surely it's much harder than this. Mm -hmm. So does it mean that like uh, the, this clever technique that, so does it mean that if you want to compute the correlators with four supercharges, you need to do the hard way or there is no other tricks now? Or? Uh, I don't think there is any result so far for four supercharges. So I'm not saying the hard way is the only one, uh, but I wouldn't know what to do. So you, you must like, you will have to sit down and think of some, some smart trick to, to use. I see. Yeah. Because even, even without this MRV limit technique, which is very powerful, even in the Melin bootstrap uh, kind of approach, still a strong constraint um, comes from the super conformal with entities. If you don't have those, uh, it's much harder, I think. Mm -hmm. I see. Thank you. Uh, is there any other question? Okay, then let's thank Pietro again for the very nice talk.